We have some serious business to cover today. We are approaching the end of June, meaning I need to do my half yearly favorites. So I spent the last couple of hours going through my old videos, seeing what products I've been using, going through every drawer in my collection, and I've created a list of my favorite products that I've tried so far in 2022. These are all products, I mean, you guys know, I try hundreds and hundreds of makeup products, so there's a lot of products that I really, really like. But these are ones that have weaseled their way into what I consider for my everyday makeup routine. I reach for all of these products thoughtlessly. You know, if I'm doing my makeup, no intentions for a video in mind, these are products that have been incorporated into those routines. No if ands, or buts about it. No deep, serious thoughts about, oh, I need to use this. Like, no, I just grab for these because I really enjoy what they do for me. There's not gonna be any eyeshadows in this video. I will have a whole separate video on the best eyeshadow palettes. And then of course, I will do the worst of as well. <laughs> but let's start off on a positive note. I have one face primer this year that has really knocked it out of the park for me. That is the Danessa Myricks Yummy Skin Glow Serum. I have been loving this. First of all, it smells like cantaloupe, so I love the way cantaloupe <laughs> smells. And this gives such a pretty hydrated, glowy look to the skin. It just adds life back into my skin. You guys know I do have more dry to normal skin, but I like a little bit of a glowy base that adds hydration. And this for me has been perfect. I love the way that it blends into the skin. All in all, I just love everything that Danessa did with this primer. I think it is so pretty that I've even worn it out without any other makeup on top just to give a dewy glow to my skin. So I highly recommend this. This is also launched with the corresponding foundation. I do like that foundation, but this is what stood out. Now, a ton of foundations, as you know, came out this year, like so many, so I had to narrow them down to just three. Just given how many I've tried, three is the best I can do because these are all super good and have officially been added into my regular rotation of foundations. So this first one is from Wayne Goss. This is a luxury cream foundation, and I just think Wayne did a phenomenal job with this foundation. It has a glowier finish. You'll see the foundation I use after this. You'll be able to do a side-by-side. -side this one is definitely more glowy, but I feel like it has such a natural look on the skin. I feel like it's just really flattering on my skin. It doesn't look too heavy, but it still gives a good amount of coverage. You can get really light coverage with it. You can get a medium, like a heavier side of medium coverage. I wouldn't say it'll take you all the way to full, but you get a pretty good level of coverage if you need it. And overall, every time I wear this foundation from Wayne Goss, my skin looks absolutely beautiful, smooth, perfected, and I really think you're not it out of the park with this foundation. I think it is incredible. Another foundation that I have loved this year that I have on this side of my face is the NARS Light Reflecting Foundation. And this is a glowy foundation. The Wayne Goss, I would say, is a little bit more glowy and skin-like. This one, it lasts a little bit longer than the Wayne Goss, I would say. It still feels very lightweight on the skin. This, to me, is one of my favorite everyday foundations. I typically prefer a medium coverage. I know light coverage products are super popular. I've always been a medium coverage kind of girl. I have unevenness and I have freckles and I'm not trying to get full coverage on my skin. I don't need to completely get rid of my natural skin texture and all of that, but I love a medium coverage just because I feel like it perfects my face enough while still not looking like I'm wearing a mask. And this one is absolutely beautiful. It wears beautifully as well throughout the day. It doesn't feel too heavy on this skin. NARS foundations are either hit or miss for me. I either love them or I hate them. And more often than not, I hate them from NARS, which I know is unbelievable because they are known for their complexion products. But this is by far my favorite foundation that NARS has ever come out with, and it's awesome. Now, if I do want a full coverage, super long wearing foundation, my favorite that I've tried this year is the Dior Forever Matte Foundation. They recently reformulated, and if I'm being honest, I prefer the older version of this. However, the new version of it is still absolutely amazing. It doesn't matter that the older one was just a little bit better because this one is still top notch. So if I am wearing this for like a long evening or for a long amount of time, I don't want my makeup to budge. I love this. It also doesn't look too heavy on the skin. It does provide a more full coverage. So I definitely wear it for those special occasions, but I still love this one. I think it is awesome. So those are the top three foundations that I've tried. There were so many that came out, but those are the ones that every time I wear them, my skin just looks 
flawless. So I have two powders that have really stood out to me this year. This one is a newer one, but I mean, I've been using it often. This is the Jaclyn Cosmetics Powder Move Loose Setting Powder. I have mine in the shade Sheer Light. This has some oomph to it, so I just feel like it smooths out the skin really well, provides a little bit of coverage. It just perfects the area. I love it for under the eyes or pressing it into pores. You'll see in my demo how immediately it just makes my skin look better. Now, if I'm going for a light coverage, natural skin makeup kind of day, I don't reach for that Jaclyn powder. This Jaclyn powder just really makes full coverage makeup look really nice and really smooth. So I've been enjoying this. It adds an extra layer of coverage, I feel like. It brightens the eyes. And it really just is a super good powder. One of the best in my collection. Now, the other powder that I've been loving is a powder foundation. This is from One Size. This launched a while ago, but I just tried it this year. This is the Turn Up the Base Versatile Powder Foundation, and I love it because of how versatile it is. So you can use this as a powder foundation. I would say it does give a pretty full coverage, but you really have to build it up. Normally, when I wear this just alone as a powder foundation, I get about a medium coverage, but I actually prefer it more so as a setting powder. Now I will wear it as a powder foundation. It is really nice, but this really does smooth the skin and make the skin just look really perfected. I mean, I don't know how else to describe it. There's something about the way that this sets makeup. I don't like the way it looks on the under eyes, but in terms of setting the rest of my skin, it just is that finishing touch to make your skin look perfect. So this is an awesome, awesome, awesome powder foundation. If you follow my channel, you know I'm a big time powder foundation girl. This so far has been the year of of cream bronzers for me. I just feel like the cream bronzers that have launched have been phenomenal and I also just love cream bronzers so I have four to share with you which I think is a lot. That's a big percentage of what's in today's video. So these are brand new but they're perfect. These are the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Sun Kissed Glow Bronzer. I have two shades, fair and medium. I use the shade medium on this side of the face. So what I love about these is they're kind of a moussey consistency, so I feel like they're really great for long wear. There's some other cream contour bronzer products that I'm actually going to talk about after this that feel. There I say a little bit more greasy and oily. This one, because it's more of that moussey formulation, I think it's a little bit more long wearing for the humidity. So I've really been enjoying this living in Florida. So these are awesome. If you have oily skin and you want to get into cream bronzers, this is a great way to go. Charlotte Tilbury did a really good job with this. Now the other three I have are extremely emollient, so they definitely aren't as long wearing in the humidity, but I will set with a powder and it's fine. So the first one I love just because of how emollient it is. This is the Rare Beauty Bronzer Stick. So I use the shade Always Sunny. This is my favorite, but I do have a darker one, Happy Soul, that I mixed today to just go a little bit better with the Charlotte Tilbury color. Oh my gosh, this is one of the most emollient cream bronzers I've tried that isn't oily or greasy. You know, it's greasier feeling than the Charlotte Tilbury, but I still think it lasts a very long time. So if you're a beginner to cream contours, the Rare Beauty ones are the way to go. I'd argue that these are my favorite product that Rare Beauty has ever come out with. I just think they are a phenomenal product on the market and one of the best, best, best cream bronzers. Another one that I have, I use this today to contour my nose. This is not new to me this year, but I've been using it so much that I had to mention it. This is the Elf cream contour palette if you're looking for a affordable cream bronzer. This has three different shades and then a highlight shade. I will use this on my face for today. I use it on my nose and you guys know, well you might not know, but if you do cream contour on your nose, you definitely want to make sure you have something that blends really well and this does just that. I cannot believe the price point that you can get this at. It really is amazing that this is an affordable product. They did a great job with this. Highly, highly, highly recommend this, especially if you're not looking to break the bang. And then the last cream bronzer that I have, I have to give this one kind of an honorable mention. It's not the top three, but it's one that I've been using for every day recently. This is the Say Sun Melt Natural Cream Bronzer in Light Bronze. I really was taken by this. I love the color on here. It's very natural on my skin tone. It definitely looks very sun-kissed. It's not too warm, but it's also not too cool. And it blends onto the skin super easily and it's very lightweight. So this is a cream bronzer that I use when I'm wearing light coverage. 
coverage. This looks really great over light coverage. Like I would say, you know, the Charlotte Tilbury can be a bit intense with natural makeup. It can definitely make it work, don't get me wrong. But this in particular really complements light coverage. If you like lighter coverage, this is a really great cream contour product to complement that and go well with that style of makeup. Okay, you may or may not be shocked by this, but I was really thinking of for this video, the products that I talk about really need to stand out in the market. You guys know endless amounts of makeup to choose from. So the items that I chose specifically are because I just feel like they're better than what you can get. They really stand out. I cannot believe, but I have to mention this, cream blush sticks are so popular. The best cream blush sticks that I've ever tried are from Rem Beauty. And these in particular, they're cheek and lipsticks. These are the only cheek and lipsticks that actually work well as both cheek and lip products. Normally, the cheek products I don't enjoy on the lips. I feel like they'll make my lips look dry. They make them just look gross. These look great as lipsticks and great as blushes. I'm currently wearing the shade Audition on my cheeks. I did demo it on the lips as well, as you can see, but I love how these blend. They wear a pretty good amount of time as well. If you want extra longevity, set with a powder blush over top. But I just love the way they blend, the colors, the way they look on the cheeks. This is the best product, in my opinion, at Rem Beauty. The best cheek and lipstick I've ever, ever used. So I've been getting a lot of use out of those lately. Okay, I have two highlights that I want to talk about. So the first is from Charlotte Tilbury. These got mixed reviews, but I'm obsessed with them. I'm putting them in my favorites of 2022 so far. These are the Pillow Talk Multi Glows. So my favorite is Romance Light. It is the lighter one. It's more of a cooler pink shade. I have it on as my highlight right now. I love that you can kind of customize. If I want a darker, pinkier highlight, I would use this side. If I want it more bright and beaming, I'll use this side. Today, I mix them all together. I just feel like it blends into the skin really seamlessly. It does emphasize texture a little bit because it's a highlight, but it's not unflattering by any means. And the colors are just so pretty. I feel like I don't have highlights that quite look like this. I also have Dream Light, which is kind of dark for my skin tone, but I used it almost as a bridge between the blush and the highlight today because the blush didn't have a sheen to it. So I almost use it as a blush topper to make the transition from the bronzer and blush shade to the highlight more smooth. So even though this is dark for me, I think it's so pretty. These have enough pigment and color to them that you can also use them on the eyelid. Incredible. The other highlight that came out very, very early in the year, but I mean, this is one of Pat's best formulas to date. This is from the Bridgerton collection. These are the Skin Fetish Sublime Skin Highlighters. Very, very pricey, but for me, worth every penny. I think that these have such a beautiful glow on the skin. I prefer the shade on me, Incandescent Gold. They have another shade that's extremely gold that would look so gorgeous on deeper complexions, but everything from the packaging down to the embossments are extremely luxurious. I think this is kind of cheap, the, the gold like writing on here, but other than that, this is such a smoothing highlight as well, given that it's a highlighter, blends into the skin seamlessly. So this is also a highlight that I cannot stop grabbing for. I also just paid so much for it that I'm more tempted to reach for it for that reason as well. I do have two different eyeliners to share with you. The first one, I don't even use this as eyeliner, but this is the Makeup Forever Artist Color Pencil in Boundless Bis. Not a new product, but new to me this year. It's just a very light, bisque kind of color. I use this to clean under my eyebrows. I used it today to clean up my lips. You can use this for pretty much anything you like. It's not too creamy, so it doesn't feel thick, but it also isn't too dry, so you can blend it out, which I think makes it so versatile because I love a creamy eyeliner, don't get me wrong, but they feel a little heavy on the skin if you use it in the way that I use it. So this is nice because it's a little bit powdery, so it's easy to blend, but it doesn't feel heavy. So most Mostly you'll find me using it to clean up under the brow or clean up my eyeliner, or cleaning up my lip liner, but you can also of course use it as eyeliner as well to brighten the eyes. The best color, I believe this has been sold out on Sephora for a while. I don't know if it's back in stock, but if you can get your hands on it, 
everyday makeup routine. I literally use this every time I do my makeup. That's huge. You guys know, I use different products every single time I do my makeup. This is one of the few products that gets used every single time. I'm very lucky to have discovered a new eyeliner pencil. This is newish to me, but I'm obsessed with it. So this is the Jones Road The Best Pencil. I have mine in the shade brown. I do intend on eventually ordering more colors. I love a brown liner nowadays, now that more natural makeup is trending. It's a little bit harder to see today because my eyeshadow is a bit more on the dramatic side, but there's something about this that is just the perfect texture. It's almost like the Makeup Forever where it's not too creamy, but it, it's almost more powdery. This to me is like a brown eyeshadow powder in a pencil form so it's really easy to get the exact shape that you want and then of course because I've just been enjoying brown liners in general this has been the perfect pencil for me so I want to get like she has a hunter green one and I'm really really hungry to get I also have it in my waterline it lasts a long time in the waterline because again I just feel like it's almost more powdery so yeah Jones Rhodes really does have the best pencil the name is true. Now mascara, really, really shocked, but the Rare Beauty Mascara, one of my favorite mascaras from Sephora. I don't buy too many high-end mascaras because the drugstore has some really good ones, but this has aged like fine wine, okay? I didn't like this the first time I used it, but the longer I've had it, the more I enjoy it. It gives volume, it gives length, it makes my lashes visible, which is something <laughs> That is hard to do, okay? I have very thin sparse lashes. They've gotten better since I've used eyelash serums But still it's very easy for me to tell a good mascara from a bad mascara Just based on how visible my lashes are and I love the volume that the rare beauty adds So if you can get this on sale or maybe get it in a gift with purchase amazing the last category that I have is lips while I am a constant rotator of my makeup. You know, people ask how I use my collection. I rarely wear the same thing two days in a row. But with lips, I wear like the same three lip products, which is ridiculous because I have such a large lip collection. But the most used lip products of 2022 for me are the Natasha Denona I Need a Rose Nude Lip Collection. Yeah, I'm all about a good nude rose lip, so I can always go to my trusty Natasha Denona collection for that. She came out with some of the most beautiful colors, and I just keep reaching for this collection because Natasha Denona has some amazingly underrated lip products. Now, glosses also launched in this collection. I don't love the glosses, but the lip liners and the lipsticks are so, so good. So she has a really creamy, easy to apply lip liner formula. At the current moment, I'm using the shade Kala. It has a hint more warmth in it to the other shades since I do feel like for my look today, something warmer would have looked better. But yeah, anytime I need a rose lip, these lip liners are just go-to perfect everyday shades. And likewise with the lipsticks. Now besides Charlotte Tilbury, Natasha Denona is my favorite lipstick formula, like right up up there with Charlotte Tilbury. Charlotte Tilbury, Natasha Denona best lipstick formulas ever. So when she comes out with them in a nude rose shade, I'm like losing my mind. I have the shade Kala to go with the lip liner over top, a hint more warmth. But yeah, I love that they also kind of come in a set, matching lip liner, matching lipstick, and lip gloss if you want. So that collection overall, was one of the most successful, if you ask me, from Natasha Denona. Absolutely killed it. And then the last two formulas are from ColourPop, but ColourPop kicked butt with these. Can't stop using them. So the first that I have are the, what are these called? The Glowing Lips. If you're looking for an everyday, hydrating, throw on your lips, throw in your purse lip product, these are it. They are super hydrating. They kind of smooth over the fine lines on the lips. They just look really good and have a great color selection. I know I had the Kala Natasha Denona lip products on top, but I did sh show you Indulge Me on my lips. It was a little bit more warm. My favorite most used shade is Cockatoo. It's kind of a mauve shade, but yeah, these give like a medium pigmentation, but they look so hydrating and juicy on the lips and they're so thin. And I don't know, this formula, 
from ColourPop is incredible. Can't believe they are the price that they are. You have to try these. Seriously, so, so good. Perfect summer lips. And then lastly, this is a brand new collection from ColourPop, but I am so taken by the So Glossy lip glosses. They launched these nude shades. These are so, so, so nice. There is a nude for everybody. These are the perfect pigmentation for a gloss. They're not clear, so it makes sense to own more than one color, but they also aren't fully pigmented. They're perfect lip glosses for directly over a lip liner because they kind of blur the lip line. That's the level of pigmentation that they have. My most used shade, if you're around my skin tone, Solana, I think is the perfect nude for me. But yeah, I've just been reaching for these nonstop whenever I need a nude gloss or whenever I have a lip liner and I just want to put a gloss over top. Those are what I've been grabbing for, even down to the deepest shade. I think they're very nice. Now, are they my favorite lip gloss formulation? Probably not, but the level of pigmentation and the colors are just so perfect that I don't care. They're still very nice not sticky they last a decent amount of time not the best but they're still just a really great line and affordable all right guys there we have it those are the best makeup products of 2022 so far keep an eye out i will have the eyeshadow version up next and then of course the worst of which yeah <laughs> so let me know down below what were some of your favorite products that you've tried so far this year and thank you so much for being subscribed to my channel and liking this video and i'll catch you guys in the next one bye guys have a good one